Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and welcome to Islam and Life with me, Tariq Ramadan, broadcasting from London. In today's show, uh, on the special occasion of Ramadan, we ask the question, what is the significance of the Night of Power? The Night of Power is a special night in the month of Ramadan, which has been singled out by the Quran, in which it is stated, the Night of Power is better than a thousand months. The Night of Power or Laylat al-Qadr is said to be the night in which the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet, while others believe it was the night in which the Qur'an was completed. Muslims are encouraged to stay up on this night, performing good deeds such as prayers and supplications, which on the occasion of the Night of Power is equal to performing good deeds over a thousand months. Some Islamic narrations also indicate that the faith of every Muslim for the coming year is decreed on this night. Thus, supplicating your needs and asking for forgiveness is encouraged. This week's Islam and Life asks, what is the significance of the Night of Power? The month of Ramadan is the month of Al-Qur'an, is the month of our book, our revelation. And we have to come back to the book and we have to come back to the recitation and to the meditation of the book. And within this month, there is this night. It could be called in the translation, could be the night of power, the night of merit, the, mind, the night of destiny. There are many meanings to, the, to this. And, and the, 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 as it was said in the clip, it's a very important night as to the spiritual density, the very meaning of our life, the very meaning of our fasting is in fact revealed through this night. And we have to think about it, we have to understand uh, what it means and by understanding what is the meaning of this night. We understand what is the meaning of Ramadan and by understanding the meaning of Ramadan we can we end up understanding the very meaning of our life because everything is connected here. So to ponder, to try to understand the meaning of this night is also to try to understand the very essence of our life as Muslims. And this is why we need to take the time to think about it and to try to get the very essence of the questions if it is said in the Quran that this night is better than uh, uh, 1000 months of spiritual uh, commitment of practicing your religion what does it mean exactly so these are questions that we have to tackle and to answer these questions I'm joined by my guest Islamic scholar Sheikh Mohammed Bahmanpour Thank you so much for being with us once again in this program. I think it's very useful to have you with, with us. Let me start with this first question, uh, which is, we know the very essence of Ramadan and what, how it is important. And still there is one night in all these 20 nights of tw or, 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 or 28 nights that is more important than all the other nights uh, during the last 10 days or 10 nights of uh, uh, or nights of Ramadan, how would you uh, explain to start to understand the meaning of this night? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and my greetings to all the viewers who are following these programs. Uh, to understand the, uh, the essence of this Laylatul Qad, I think we have to understand the concepts which are, which are joined with it. There are two concepts I think which are very important and a third one which I will mention later on. One is the concept of the night being better than 1000 months. Mm. That means that uh, what human beings can earn in this night, what we understand, is better than what they can earn in 1000 months in terms of spiritual blessing, in terms of probably their material uh, needs which they may ask on this night from God and that's why they say worship on this night is better than 1000 night worship in which there is no Laylatul Qadr. Hmm. The other notion which is connected to this night which I think is the most important notion is the concept of Barakah. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr this is about the Quran and then we have... So how do you translate Quran. this? We have revealed it in night of Qadr. Now, whatever the meaning of Qadr is, okay, we may, uh, the, the Exodus have given four meanings for Laylatul Qadr. One Qadr coming from Qudra, which is power. Uh, that's night of power in the sense that power of God is manifest on this night, not to us, of course, to angels, probably to those who can see the world of Malakut, the power of God is quite manifest, that's why Laylatul Qadr is mentioned. And also 
the mechanism which is in, in, at work in this night shows the power of God. The other is Qadr coming from uh, merit and mm. esteem. So it's an esteemed night. Mm. Again, because of course that manifestation of Barakah from God. The other meaning uh, which is uh, from uh, Qadr, destiny. So it's the night of destiny where the destiny of people is actually uh, determined in this night. And the other from Qadr meaning tightness. Allahu yabsutu rizqa liman yasha'u wa yaqdar. God expands rizq or tightens it. Hmm. Now, some of the exodus say that because the verse says, tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruh, the angels and the ruh come down to earth. And these angels, uh, uh, the, the, the number of the angels, they are in their myriads, in their millions. So the earth will become tight for them. And that's why they are no, it's no, called it's from yeah. tightness. Yeah, yeah. Now, in Surah Al-Qadr, we have Inna Anzalna Hu Al-Qadr. We have revealed the Quran in Raylat Al-Qadr. And in Surah Dukhan, we have Inna Anzalna Hu Laylatin Mubarakah. We have revealed it in a night which is full of Barakah. Now, Barakah is a very important concept in the Quran. And we have this with regards to times, with regards to places, with regards to people. وَبَارَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ إِسْحَاقِ For example, with regards to Ibrahim mm -hmm. and Ishaq, Barakah has been poured upon them. With regard to places, for example, the, the land in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem and their vicinity is called الَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ لَيْلًا مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْسَى الَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهَا مسجد الْأَقْسَى We have made it blessed itself and what is around the it. The blessed place, yes. Yeah. yeah. And also Mecca. إِنَّ أَوَّلَ بَيْتٍ وُذَعَ لِلنَّاسِ لَلَّذِي بِبَكَّةَ مُبَارَكًا Hmm. The first place of worship which was established for people was that in Mecca, which is blessed. Now, this blessing, what do we find around Mecca, around Kaaba, or around uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, which we may call Barakah? We don't find much material Barakah, much physical Barakah there, especially hmm. in Mecca, where it's a very dry desert. So there should be some sort of a spiritual Barakah there. Hmm. That means, that means anyone who wants to connect to God, it would be easier for them to connect in those places than in other places because there is a Barakah there. Hmm. There is a Barakah in Tura Sina, for example. And then Burak man finara wa man hawlaha. When Musa went to Tura Sina, said, this is full of Barakah, this place. That means it's very easy to connect to God, to connect to the world which is beyond us. Now, in Laylatul Qadr also, it's Laylatul Mubarak. Hmm. That means it's easier. The blessings of God, the spiritual blessings of God, as is mentioned in Surah Al-Qadr, the spiritual blessings are overwhelming. So there is a, there's an easier connection between us and God in that night, if we wish to establish that connection. So, so, so what you are saying, to make it clear, because this is quite interesting, what is understood as, as blessed or the blessing in space or in time or in people, spir yeah. in people means this is the time where the connection with God is easier. So this is what you would say, blessed, yeah. because there are many meanings of al al Mubarak, Baraka. Yeah. It could be the, the blessing in itself. So, so, so what does it mean, yeah, easier think, to connect? I think in, in, in the context, the meaning mm. of Baraka would differ. Mm. So for example, yeah, exactly. God said, well, yeah. he has created the earth. Mm. Allah blessed the earth. That mm. means, look how, what blessings we can take yes, out, out of, the out of her, his mercy even. Yeah, yes, of exactly. course. Yeah. And it's all the plants, greens, uh, mines, uh, uh, everything that we take from the earth is barakah. Hmm. However, what is the barakah around Mecca, for example? Or what's the barakah in Ishaq and Ibrahim? Hmm. It, it's a spiritual barakah, isn't it? Yes. That means Ibrahim and Ishaq, wa barakna alayhi wa ala Ishaq, what I understand from it, wa barakna alayhi wa ala Ishaq means that they they were given that sort of heart or that sort of soul which they could connect to me very easily. This is their barakah. Hmm. And they could make connection between me and my other servants. This hmm. is the barakah given to them. 
This is the barakah given to every prophet and the prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, and all other prophets. This is the barakah given mm. to them. Now, when we say this uh, Laylatul Qad is uh, Laylatul Mubarakah, it means that you can, you can receive things from God anyhow. I mean, whether it's spiritual, yes, exactly. it's material, yeah. or whatever, you can receive things from God. However, the th two things should be distinguished from each other. First of all, th this night is not something which the Quran says it's, it belongs to Muslims. Hmm. When God speaks in the Quran, he speaks in a universal way, hmm. that these things happen universally. Hmm. So when he says, uh, in that night, every confirmed command is issued. Mm. That's not only about the Muslims, that's mm. about everything in this universe. Every human being, every planet. It has to do with Sunanullah. So, so with Sunan, it's, it's, yes, it's, of course. It's with the, the yeah. God's rules and. and Absolutely. And, and, yeah, and that, that's, that's for everyone. Whether you know Laylatul Qad, you do not know Laylatul Qad. Whether you worship in that night, you do not worship in that night. But there's a special blessing which comes only for those who connect to God on these nights and connect to those, that realm which mm. from which is issued all these blessings. Mm. And that means, just to, just to give an example, there is a, there is a transmitter, transmitting barakah. Now that barakah comes everywhere. However, from this side, there is no reception. It only comes as a so, sort of uh, going through things in a systematic way. But for certain people, they have a reception as well. They receive this actively, not passively. And for them, of course, this night is better than 1,000 mm. nights because they can receive things which is not imaginable for us to receive in other nights. It, I, I think what you are saying is very important because it's the, the, the secret of any spiritual life. Because what we have, for example, even you know, in a daily basis, for suhoor barakah, that in fact the, that we eat in the morning just before fasting, there is barakah, there is mm. a blessed time because yeah. this is where you are going to call, you, 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 you pray, there are these supplications that you are making to, uh, and you are asking Allah. And here what you are saying is that in fact, what we know with the dua, with the supplications is uh, call me, talk to me, I will respond to you. And what you are saying here is during this night, universally, this is why he's sending his blessings yes. and asking us, open your hearts. That's so this, right. is, this is why you have yeah. to be ready for it. Turn on your receivers. Exactly. I'm exactly. transmitting, yeah. turn on your receivers. Yes, yeah. and this is why it's out once again of his mercy and his compassion that he's sending this and we have yes. to be ready. And at the same time, the messenger, peace be upon him, he wanted to say to the people, to tell them this, the Laylatul Qa, this, li this uh, uh, night is, he wanted to say it and he went out and two people were uh, disputing and, and they, he ma they made him forget what he was going to say. And then he's telling us, you have to be ready, but you have to look for it. Mm. So during yeah, the last yeah. uh, 10 uh, old nights of Ramadan, what is the secret of this? Why should we f uh, look for, seek this night while this is where he's talking or he's sending the blessings. What is the secret of look for it? Well, looking for it, uh, of course, as I said, uh, it means that you have to open your heart, you have to turn on your rec hmm. receivers to, to receive it. And because the point is because we don't know which night in Ramazan exactly. this yeah. is hmm. going to be. It, it, it somehow multiplies the blessings because, first of all, Every night of Ramadan is a blessed night. Yeah. And if you look for Laylatul Qadr, first of all, it shows your eagerness. It shows that you are thirsty of those blessings. You really want it from God. And the more thirsty you are, the more ready and prepared you are to receive the blessings. Mm. As Rumi says, do not look after water. Look after thirst. Mm. When thirst comes, the water would show itself to you. Mm. Now, when the thirst is saturated in human being, then of course it, it needs only just a small hint to mm. open the gate for all the blessings to come. Mm. And therefore we have in traditions that Laylatul Qadr is hidden in the nights of Ramadan. Mm. Yes. So that mm. you can, you look for it, you get prepared for it, that eagerness would come. And uh, that's why most of, especially the last 10 months of Ramadan, we had that the, the Prophet 
never slept on those ten nights, and mm. he spent all the night adding in more and more yeah. worship. Yeah, that's mm. right. Mm. Yeah. So that that's very important because this is where what you are saying is that it's in fact the spiritual life. It's about the very essence, if we understand it deeply, the very essence of jihad, which is this reforming yourself. Mm. It's it's to 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 exert yourself to come close to Him. In fact, this is exactly what we were uh, mentioning, Rumi. It's it's look at yourself, not mm. what is helping you to avoid being thirsty, mm. but thirsty is the way you are clo coming close to the one who is going yes. to to help you to go beyond that. But the point is that uh, uh, very often we end up among Muslims to say, okay, is the 26th day, the 27th night, and we have it, there is as a tradition, because we have some scholars saying it's most uh, probably this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it right to deal with the, the night of uh, Laylatul Qadr in such a way? What would be the best attitude the Muslims should have during the last 10 days of Ramadan as to this night? Yeah, uh, well, uh, as you have mentioned, there are certain nights which are somehow uh, pointed out mm. uh, at, to be probably Laylatul Qadr. Exactly. Yeah. Right? For example, in traditions from Ahlul Bayt, we have it's either 20, the night of 21st or 23rd, and in other traditions, we have 27th. Yeah. So it is not actually uh, clearly and definitively exactly. uh, yeah. uh, determined. Mm. As I said, and you mentioned, this means that we have to somehow uh, search for it in those ten nights. Mm. Search for it with our uh, preparedness, with our struggle, so that we may receive the blessings of that night. Mm. And uh, struggling to, 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 as they say, to somehow receive the blessings of Laylatul Qadr, rather than the blessing come and passing over us. Exactly. Yeah. We have to yeah. receive it. Hmm. This is mentioned in many of our traditions that uh, Loki is the one who receives, who actually catches the blessings of Laylatul Qadr. That means there is a passive sort of thing which comes and goes, and there is an active uh, struggle from us to take it in, to receive it, and hmm. that's very important. Like, for example, again, we have Yes, that's important. Yeah. It mm. is full of peace until Matla al Fajr. Now, where is that peace? Why don't we feel it? Why don't we experience it? Mm. The point is that the receptions are off, so we do not receive the peace. Okay. If the reception is on, if we have this, the system of the heart ready, then we will feel the salam, we will feel the peace. But, but you ask a question, you say, where is this peace? My question would be, what is this peace that we are talking about? How would you define this salamun here? Hadda matla al fashion. Yeah, salamun. Uh, again, the traditions come to hell. Yeah. That the angels, when they come to the earth, yes. and we don't know what that means. Mm. Okay. Tanazzalu al malaikatu wa ruh. But we don't know what that really means. That the angels come to earth. Mm. Is this an uh, intersection of the world of mulk and malakut which mm. happens? Mm. Because then the we have angels the, and all the. Yeah, the we have the angels. destiny mm. for the next year yeah. is, is written. And this is again an intersection of the eternal world and the material world, the physical world, the world mm. which is bound with time. How is the relationship between the world which is bound in time and the world which is eternal? Hmm. It's very, diff very complicated to, hmm. to, to try to, yes. to imagine. This verse says, uh, according to the explanation that we have from, uh, from, no, from yes, traditions, yes. that there is an intersection of eternity, the, l the world of eternity, with the material world in the sense that certain uh, destiny or, or, or destiny for the whole next year, which we don't know what it is going to be translated in the world of Malakut, is going to be uh, destined, written, and the angels are going to somehow uh, yes. ap there, there, apply it. There, there, there are many levels. That there is these two worlds, you know, the, the, the immaterial, the eternal, yeah. and the temporal. There is also something which is your own quest is finding is goal. So when your answers find their uh, that your questions find their answers, there is a kind of inner peace, which is also True. something that True. we can get during but the But that's night. again an intersection exactly. of eternal world and temporal world. Yes, exactly. Because we are in temporal world. When mm. we ask the eternal, 
then how, how this is translated in that world which there, in which there is no time. Yeah. So there is an intersection here. Yes, yes. And but it's, it's not only the cosmos. It's, it's yeah, the inside, inner, of course. Inside, of it's course the, inside. The, the and that's line. the meaning probably of angels coming to the yes. earth. That, that, that we know, know exactly the secret of, uh, of yeah. it. I have one last question about the whole uh, uh, Laylatul Qadr. Uh, what is said and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Man qama Laylatul Qadr, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhami. So the one who is going to be full of faith and standing and praying during this night, all his sins for, uh, that he had are going to be uh, removed, so he, he's going to be purified. So now we are looking for the uh, uh, night of power, of merit, of destiny, or of uh, uh, you know talent. Kindness. So, what should we do during this night to respond to iman and wahtisab? So, so what is a Muslim expected to do, men and women, during this night? What is your advice now, today, in our yeah. time? I think. The most important thing when we really want to connect to God is that humility of the heart that we realize that we are nothing mm. and He is everything. And we realize that we, ha we are full of sins. Whatever we have done has been in negligence of His mercy, negligence of His bounties, His blessings. And this gives us a sense of brokenness. That brokenness that God says, I am in the broken heart. Hmm. That brokenness of the heart is when the blessings start to come down. We may stand in prayer, but with proud. We'd say, oh God, look, I am the one who's standing in prayer before you. Hmm. And uh, this is not going to help. Hmm. If the heart is broken inside, really, that God, I really deserve nothing. I only rely on your mercy. That is when the mercy comes. Thank you so much. I think that this discussion was very important because the starting point of everything is to understand our religion. In fact, is to understand the very essence of this night. And what you said, there are many dimensions and you insisted on El Baraka, which is the blessing of this night, meaning that it could be a place, it could be uh, the inner being, it could be in fact a time, a, a, a night, which is here uh, where uh, Allah is coming close, is talking, and he's coming, and what we have to do is to be open, I mean, with an open heart, just to uh, uh, welcome this, and this is, this readiness to get it, it's something which is important, and what you are ending is, the humility during this night is power connected to God, is humility related to human mm -hmm. beings and this is the way we have to deal with it which is the essence of Ramadan it's the essence of our life well that's all we have time for please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows we have seen and here is the way to contact us Islam and life welcomes your opinion so please send us your suggestions as well as criticism on any of the shows you've seen or would like to see you can share your thoughts with other Islam and life fans engage with debate and view past shows on our social media platforms. Tweet us at Islam and Life TV or join us on Facebook by liking our page Islam and Life on Press TV. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Sheikh Mohammed Bahmanpour. Thank you so much for your insight and your teaching. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah. <laughs>